it's Jessica Massa with WTF Health. I'm here at the Connected Health Conference, and joining me right now, I have Jennifer Esposito. She is the General Manager for Health and Life Sciences for Intel. Jennifer, welcome. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, great to be here today. Thank you. Okay, so you've got all sorts of cool stuff happening at Intel, and the thing that you think is going to transform healthcare is AI and 5G. So let's jump in and, yeah. and start talking about that right away. Let's right. start with the 5G. Can we do that? Well, you know, we've been talking today about moving the, the edge where we are, you know, using things like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things and even VR and AR and sort of expanding that beyond the hospital into the patient's home and into the community, into specialty offices. And things like 5G are, you know, it's not just about speed anymore. This is a real big accelerator that's going to allow more intelligence at the edge and everywhere in between. And so we're excited about the possibility that 5G is going to bring to allow us to bring care into the home in new ways, like using VR and AR to bring specialists to rural communities that don't otherwise have access. That's very exciting. And on the AI side, what are you guys excited about there? Well, AI is everywhere. Data is everywhere. And oh a lot of the, God. yes, I mean, the conversations we've been having around data or everything actually turns back to AI because what we really need to do in order to leverage the data that exists out there in digital form is use AI to really get insights out of it. And so in healthcare right now, we are sitting on top of a lot of digital data, but not necessarily a lot of insights around it. No, and that's been the biggest complaint, especially if you go and talk to clinicians, that is the thing. It's like we've got a, like a fire hose of data, yes. but there is nothing insightful coming out of it. Right. So I want to ask you about AI. AI in, in particular, because I feel like this has been, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a buzzword. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are starting to define it differently. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you from, from Intel's perspective, how are you guys defining it? Is it artificial intelligence or is it augmented intelligence? And then I've also heard um, people talking about, you know, getting angry that AI is starting to encompass machine learning mm -hmm. and, you know, other things like that. So how are you guys defining AI? Well, for me, it's more about the use case. So there's, there's big AI, big artificial intelligence, and there's different types of analytics and AI that you can apply underneath. And so, yes, I know some people are very strict about oh whether God. is it machine learning, is it deep learning, and does this fit or not. I think it's a broad spectrum of how are you using advanced analytics using data. Okay. Um, and I think the important point about that is that AI is happening now. And if, I think if you sort of stick to some of these more strict definitions, you, you focus in on these really super advanced use cases where you know, it really is artificial intelligence. It's automation of healthcare. But we really feel that this is about augmentation. So it goes back to what you said. Yeah. It is about augmenting the work of physicians and other health workers so that they can be more efficient, perform their jobs more easily, and focus in on the most complex cases. What are you guys doing to help get those insights out of the data? Because, I mean, that seems to be, like we've talked about, the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's like, what, what do you do? And what is Intel doing in particular, you know, around that and helping bring some meaning to all of the, all of the different blood pressure readings and mm -hmm. Fitbit data and all the other stuff that gets now dumped into an EMR? Well, we work with a variety of partners in the ecosystem who are working on solutions either using AI or IoT um, to make sure that they are leveraging the latest and greatest technology to advance what their products and their solutions and services are doing. Okay. And so what are, you, what are you hot on right now as far as technology is concerned? I want to know what's hot and what's not from your perspective well, at Intel. I mean, you, you obviously, like, you, you circulate it around the conferences. You talk to a lot of people. You've obviously got great reach as far as your client base sure. and things like that are concerned. So what's hot? Well, we talked about 5G already, but I am really excited about 5G because okay. I do think it's going to make a really sort of revolutionary shift. It's not evolutionary, and I think that... Well, paint me a picture. Like, what do you mean by revolutionary shift? Well, like I said before, it's not about just, a, you know, an, an incremental improvement in speed. It's about lower latency. It's about more reliability. And this means for the first time, we can actually rely on connectivity in healthcare where we might not have done it before because we didn't have that reliability that we need, really, in these sort of life-critical life yeah. situations. Yeah. Okay. And what are you not hot on? Is there anything out there that you're like, mm, not anymore? Well, when it comes to AI, um, we see lots of very single point, narrow use case solutions, maybe okay. around a single disease or even like a subset of a single disease. And a lot of times those are individual algorithms and you see individual companies um, selling those to healthcare providers. And what we're hearing from providers is they don't know what to do anymore because they've got all of this, some bombardment of different companies, different yeah. algorithms, and there's no single platform that they can rely on for all of it. And so there's multiple types of implementations, different um, environments that they have to work work in. And so I think we really have to get to a place where we have a sort of common platform to leverage these capabilities and also think about health more continuously, not necessarily a single disease, because we all know that most people, especially when they already have one chronic condition, are suffering from multiple. And so the importance of being able to collect data more continuously and think about that from an overall health and well-being perspective is important. 
Do you think, I mean, as far as like the next, like, how, I mean, how far are we from getting some of this, like the, the real meaning that we want out of the data? Like how far away is that in your opinion? Well, I think we're pretty close. I think you, we okay. have a lot of the data. We have the ability to collect a lot of the data. For me, it's more about how do you use the data? How do you put it into clinical practice? Okay. So I don't think it's that there's this gap in terms of the ability to execute on artificial intelligence. It's really finding the right way to leverage it in clinical practice so that it can benefit patients today. How, as far as like the, the healthcare industry is concerned, the health systems that you're working with, the clinicians, and even the patients, how can we help ease this along? Because I mean, I think like, like you said, I mean, everybody's got a different system. There's all of these myriad new you know, digital health companies that are coming out with different ways to slice and dice things. There's the, the concern of dirty data. There's yeah. data privacy issues, and that's a health policy thing. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to help ease this along? Well, I think it's important to start using AI. And that's why I always sort of point out the fact that AI is happening now, um, because we focus on that future state, that very perfect future state. And the reality is there's, there's a lot of um, things like administrative and financial use cases that can benefit hospital systems themselves, sure. right, from an efficiency and a cost sure. perspective. But that also translates to things that benefit patients as well. It frees up access, it helps them get improved quality of care. And so we need to start doing those kinds of use cases today. I like that. So just start now. Just, just, start. just stop just worrying it. about it. Just <laughs> jump into the AI pool. It's no longer a buzzword. It is, it is a reality. Right. You heard it here. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to get a perspective from somebody at a company like Intel. I really appreciate you stopping by. No problem. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. thank you. I'm Jessica DeMasso with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.